An interrogation of Tunumbu's Bulaba syndrome. Welcome to the news and thank you for tuning in to listen. Please subscribe to our channel. We are celebrated across the globe as giant of Africa, but a sincere assessment of this nomenclature would reveal our court scenario painting a broader picture of a national deceit. Political pundits often assert that the most populous black nation is living on the fortunes of past glories. This popular opinion is debatable but can be judicially examined if the lingering political trauma is taken into cognizance by weighing the tentative objectivism of aspirants, especially to others' breed of politicians gambling against all odds to break the jinx of a kingmaker breaching all protocols to become a king. In a lucid brainstorming ponder on current realities, the candidacy of Chief Bola Ahmed Tenembo to rule Nigeria is not out of place. He is qualified to contest, but at the same time, he is tested and not trusted. Who made Tenembo a kingmaker in the first place? In pursuant of ideal democratic principles, the 2023 general election is another opportunity for Nigerians to prove a rigid valid point by attempting to patriotically fine-tune the new political order in the Niger area. To this end, the political arena has been modified to suit the common will of the masses who are the mercy of the capitalist ridicule, oppressive misadventure, and society decadence in calculated phases of court calendar years. The Gaban is constitutionally qualified to contend for the highest political office in the land, but in the realistic narrations, he is morally corrupt to partially govern a clan, not even a hamlet. Comically, many supporters of Tenebu's overblown ambition are bragging shoulder high in anticipation for a scramble of the country's assets in solidarity with the illogical daydream of their principal. Now, let's roll the dice. The history of Lagos State is placed without mentioning of Bola Ahmed Tenembu. However, these allusions were brought to bear in the gutters of incongruous loot, personal allocation of funds, cabalistic thrive, and draconian infractions. This is a learning summary of the behavioral defect of a man who wrote a between 1999 and 2007. However, it is full of terrible woes as Lagosians are still reckoning their travel. To date, Tenembu is blatantly accumulating illegitimate proceeds from his free-filling leadership style as he continues to dribble the collective sensibilities of the oppressed citizens veiled in the regalia of shame as the mouthed national leader of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC. Tenembo locked the prospect of Lagos State and buried the kids in a shallow pocket, thereby blindfolding any size of remorse in the lame conceal of human misdeeds. No doubt, the business hub of Nigeria, a supposedly center of excellence, can merely be adjudged a former capital city of Nigeria converted to Trimble's business empire. A cracked enslavement molded on the altar of sheer wickedness. This is not rocket science analysis, but a practical assessment of the self-centered cravings of a national tyrant gunning to take over Asurok in continuity of his unsatisfied accumulation of wealth at the detriment of the poor masses with reckless abandon. Nigerians, especially Lagosians, will not forget in a haste how Tenembo appointed his biological daughter as Iya Loja, the head of all market women in the state, immediately after the demise of his mother. For the record, this title is not monarchical or hereditary, but a self-acclaimed lion of the bodylon imposed his 40-year-old daughter and tamed the collective of traders who were left with zero option than to embrace the cumbersome rascality spearheaded by Jagaban. This is just a miniature of his atrocities when he reigned as the executive governor of Lagos State. However, he successfully earned accolades in his attempt to reintroduce sanity in Lagos State with the establishment of Loma, Lasma, and Kai, which has survived the test of time. Tenembo also sanitized Lagos State civil service by ousting ghost workers and introduced the more robust and genuine workers' database devoid of infiltration. Be that as it may, Jagaban has proven over time to be a lord in the main of pomposity lashed on the fringes of his poorly managed attitudinal diabolism in connectivity to an uncommon stanchy appetite of gluttony and a hot pursuit of his crudely toxic undemocratic power play, especially in the southwest Nigeria, 
with competent exception of Washington State, which is currently governed by opposition party PDP, to cite another ugly instance, Tirimbo and his widely detested portfolio of national leader in celebration of his dubious capabilities to install and remove politicians at ease whenever at ease, especially in Lagos State. All this while, the kingmaker was following a Shenangan ambition to emerge as a president of Nigeria in disguise through his passion Greek gift of imposing members of his cabal, who in turn fall as we pray to adopt Tirimbo Shiloh part of deceptive engagement in furtherance of a clueless future ambition. The Tirimbo also cajoled President Muhammad Buhari to sign an Oholi pact in 2015 or 2019. Well, events in the coming days shall unravel the trails. It is now an old tale to describe this disarray of problems ravaging the most populous black nation. Nigeria is pitiably experiencing societal decay, harsh economic policies, inflation, and insecurity in the gleeful apogee. The country urgently needs the services of an experienced political physician to heal the old wounds in seek of stability. War many Nigerians should tactically jostle to elect a selfless leader who is determined to save Nigerians as a young lifesaver instead of repeating old mistakes by accepting the selfish ambition of Jagaban. I know my perception is a pill too bitter to swallow, especially in the camp of Tinubu's beneficiaries or his legion of sycophants working for the betterment of their stomach infrastructure. If Nigerians must succeed and survive as a clammed United Nation, sectional interests must be raised in the oven of patriotism. Unity and diversity should be aligned in order to define the purest way forward, especially at this critical point of our nation's history. If at all, Tenable excels at the polls by applying the old formula of buying votes with money stockpiled in Bilon Van, then there is no gain said. It will be the worst catastrophe to befall Nigeria and Nigerians because at the moment his incapacitated posture, campaign posture is obvious even to the blind. The Bulaba syndrome and other spoken gave are practical realities of senility which is tandem with old age. Longevity with successful impact is often featured in our daily prayers and supplication, but we should never pray to get old to a point where we are regarded as mere mortals renowned for ugliest ability, abilities to constitute nuisance. As Nigerians prepare for the forthcoming general elections, citizens should not support any candidate in line with political party sentiment. This option is a archaic, overused with zero trace of tangible orientation or good result. Nigerians should endeavor to compare the antecedents of politicians by learning how to separate the bad, the good, and the ugly. In the worst case scenario, aspirants should be weighed on the scale of voting in favor of a lesser evil by learning how to bury the worst evildoers in the abyss graveyard of overdue political retirement. I strongly have believed the masses have suffered the resultant effect of their past mistake, and if only the new innovation of BVH technology can be transparently utilized, citizens are ready to make a loud statement thus, setting the pace for a new Nigeria. A word is enough for the wise. All right, on this note, we have come to the end of the news. We say thank you for turning in to listen. Until I come your way next time, enjoy the rest of your day.